The Hawke's Bay Regional Council has teamed up with Comvita, Massey University and others as part of a PGP program called High Performance Manuka Plantations. Around 2011, about five hectares of manuka was planted to assess the potential for erosion control while creating a source of high-value plants capable of enabling bees to produce high-grade medical honey. The trial was soon expanded to cover 140 hectares. Regional Council Chairman Fenton Wilson explains. The manuka trial that we're doing here at Lake Tutera is groundbreaking for us on the basis that it's taking a nutrient issue we have with the hills around here which are affecting the lake and turning it into a productive solution. So the council's incredibly enthusiastic about the potential of this to help us manage nutrient issues going forward. Sediment nutrient issue that's affected the lake, uh, it's, it's now prone to algal bloom, uh, nutrient levels are too high and uh, you know there's a range of issues around that but the um, main one is nutrient ingress I suppose. So it's a New Zealand problem. Um, and if we can find ways to fix it and make money for a farmer, uh, it's got to be good. It's a 40 year project to fix Lake Tutera. We're on year 20, I think, at the moment. We needed to find a way to get money out of the hills. So we approached Blue, actually, the guy that leases the place to see if we could do it, and he's been very accommodating. The Manuka trial here at Tutera, really, that was about saying, in our hill country, we've got large areas of erodible land, and some of that land's not getting a good return in terms of stocking return, and a tree crop, if it's the right tree crop, could make a difference. So the trial here was to say, can we get this high MGO Manuka, have it established in our rougher hill country, in a way which actually adds value to the farming enterprise. Really strong partners in this, uh, particularly in terms of the Manuka trial, uh, is Comvita, really important partners. Um, so Massey University, uh, so we're, we're tied into the Primary Growth Partnership, uh, which is part of this driving this high MGO uh, manuka across New Zealand. And in that there's a bunch of partners, you know, Landcorp's in there, Titumu Pairai, uh, some private investors. Well, what we're talking about potentially here is probably quite ironic to a bunch of farmers, in fact you talk to them about it, they used to cut a lot of manuka down. But the reality is that this high MGO manuka, there's significant markets, particularly in medical and cosmetic grade products, and those actually can drive quite a bit of value at the farm gate. Well, it's pretty early days in terms of the thinking for the future, particularly how the relationship works between the farmer and the beekeeper and, and investors as well. It's pretty early days. But it would be fair to say that a solution where the farmer's putting up the land and getting obviously part of the honey crop uh, and clearly from the beekeeper's point of view, they want a vibrant beekeeping industry. And so there's a whole bunch of things that need to be managed around that. There's disease, there's hive placement, there's having strong hives throughout the course of the year. 150 to 250 bucks per hectare per annum would not be unrealistic. And when you compare that as a net return to some of the steep erodible country and what it does actually deliver in a farming sense, that's probably reasonably attractive. Other regional councils are definitely involved in looking at Manuka and so in how we partner up in terms of our region. So we're looking now and, and talking about what those partnerships might be and what the funding models might be. Because you know, in terms of scale, there's about 150,000 hectares roughly of country that could be in a better land use and drive better economic and environmental performance. Uh, and that's a big chunk of land and so it actually requires a lot of partners to invest to drive the outcome. In the nectar we're looking for a component called dihydroxyacetone or shortened to DHA and so that is the precursor to methylglyoxal which is the antibacterial component in the honey and we also test the nectar sugar so we can use that to look at how much honey we can produce from these cultivars. We know that genetics plays a role in their quality so Convita has set up a breeding program and there's four main cultivars planted here but it is actually about 16 varieties planted here in total that have been bred by that breeding program. And so they've been selected from stands and cultivars of manuka that are known to produce high levels of methylglyoxal in the honey. Once they're planted, we monitor their establishment using circular plots and we look at their survival and their growth. And when they get to two to three years of age, when they have significant flowering, we test the nectar and we also take honey samples to look at the apiary data that we get the beekeepers to help us with. A lot of this is planted in broad acre, so that is usually planted 
at about 1100 stems per hectare but at Massey we are looking at different spacings and how effective those different densities are. There's a lot of pest issues during the establishment phase so pest control is vital for establishment of them. The other main pest that we also look into is scale insect which creates sooty mould on the trees so we have a PhD student who's looking into the effects of scale insects and sooty mould on the growth and the quality of the honey. For the first few years they get nibbled by stock but um, in some situations and especially here at Tuatera they have put sheep in once they've reached about three years and the sheep generally don't browse them once they're above their eyesight so they seem to be fine with light grazing from sheep. We have multiple field sites all across New Zealand that we monitor. They all have these cultivars planted at them. At those sites we assess the soil, the climate data. We are quite close to being able to recommend some cultivars for specific sites. We already have cultivars that we know do well in specific areas, for example drought areas or frost areas. We're only still in the establishment phase really, so we have quite a lot of data on establishment and survival. Um, we're just starting to get really into the quality, so we have taken nectar samples from most of our sites now, and most years, most sites we've done two to three years of nectar sampling at. Um, so here at Tuatera, we sampled um, the cultivars that are planted in the plantation, their nectar, so that's producing significantly higher levels of DHA than the local manuka here, so that's quite promising. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.